So today's presentation is, uh, is for informational purposes only. The information is not a substitute for medical advice from your medical doctor. Absolutely not. The information is not meant to prevent, diagnose, or treat or cure any health condition. This is for educational purposes only. If you're concerned about your health condition, please discuss it with your primary doctor or your local ER. Just wanna get that out there, okay? Okay, awesome. Now that we got the disclaimer out of the way, this information is for everyone, <coughs> not just for um, the men to watch, but ladies, everybody. We're gonna be talking about the top five men's health concerns and issues. So I'm not sure if there's gonna be any <coughs> surprises, but here's the top five. I'm gonna list them out before we start talking about them. So the first one is heart health. The second one is high blood pressure. The third one is diabetes. Fourth is depression. And the fifth one is cholesterol and statins. So what? we're gonna do a real deep dive into all of these. So thank you everyone who's joining us live. And thank you for those that are watching this recorded. We're really glad that you're here. I'm Lori Rappi from Thrive Functional Wellness Center. This is- Hi, I'm Dr. Rappi. Hi, Joan, nice to see you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Jacob and Julie and Darlene. Thank you everyone for being here. So let's get started because we've got a lot to talk about and we're gonna start with the first one, heart health. Will you tell us, Dr. Rappi, a little bit more about heart health and some heart of the health. stats? Heart yes. health. So it's a big concern, but let me just give you some statistics and I'm gonna read them off so because I, I didn't memorize them. One person dies every 36 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. One person every 36 seconds. So wow. we've been talking here for a few minutes, so four people have died. That's unbelievable. Wow. That's just amazing. We could really go on to the next topic already, but let me give you a little bit more. There's about 655,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's one in every four deaths. It's Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States of America. Wow. 18 million uh, people ages 20 and older have coronary heart disease. Wow, did you hear that over the age of 20? 18.2 million Americans wow. from the age of 20 and older have coronary heart disease. That's just absolutely mind blowing. Wow. Now remember, Heart disease is developed. It's something that we develop over time. We're not born with it. Yeah. If we develop it, we can reverse it, right? We can prevent it from happening in the first place. And that's the most important thing. That's what we do in functional medicine compared to the medical model. Our goal is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Right. If we start to see signs we're headed down that road of heart disease, we need to do everything we can to reverse it as soon as possible. What else do I got here? Yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, that's pretty good. Oh, in the United States, someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds. Wow. Did you yeah. guys know that? That's yeah. shocking. Every 40 seconds. Wow. I don't let, think let I me, knew that one. Let me give you one more. This is another good one. It says two in 10 deaths from coronary artery disease happens in adults less than age 65. So if you're wow. not 65 years old, don't be thinking, oh, I'm fine. It's for old people. It's not. Wow. It's not. It can affect anybody. It's developed over time. Okay? Yeah, All like right. you said, if it's developed over time, that means the choices that we make every day, That's right. we can make different choices Correct. so that we don't become one of these statistics Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Wow. Choices we make. The choices we made yesterday, today, and tomorrow are really going to set our future up to be healthy or sick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Good. Wow. That's crazy. Heart disease. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. High blood pressure. I bet everybody who's watching this live and recorded knows somebody that's on high blood pressure medication. So this is really important information. Let's hear. So that. high blood pressure. Think about this. So having high blood pressure makes you susceptible and increases your risk of developing heart disease. Right? Okay. We just talked about heart disease. What did it say? Someone dies of heart disease every 36 seconds. 
Wow. So if I have high blood pressure, that means that I have a higher risk of developing heart disease, which is a leading cause of death. So maybe what we should do is look at, let's fix that high blood pressure. You know, it's a stepping stone. That's right. right. It could be that that's stepping right. stone. And okay. in what we do in functional medicine, again, is different than the medical model. The medical model sees your high blood pressure as a symptom. And then they write you their prescription of blood pressure pills to lower the symptom. They never look at addressing the underlying cause right. ever. You take that high blood pressure pill for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When there's things that you can do. Lots of things. I hope that that's one thing. You know, we're really big on giving people hope that you don't just have to settle for how you feel, that there are things that you can do, even with this crazy list of statistics here. So That's right. So this is another good one. Nearly half of the adults in the United States have high blood pressure. Nearly half of the wow. adults in our country. Wow. That's over 100 million people. That's just wow. mind-blowing. Now remember, you develop high blood pressure. You're not born with it. You develop it. Wow. And at some point when your blood pressure looks like it's gonna be out of range and elevated, we should have done something to prevent it from getting out of range. And the medical right. model, again, doesn't deal with things like that. They wait until you've reached the level, then they wanna write your prescription. There was one more here I thought that was good. A study in the Journal of American Geriatrics found about 68% of the men ages 40 to 79 with high blood pressure also have erectile dysfunction. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. Okay. So it's not your haircut, you know, it's not the blouse you're wearing. It's got nothing to do with that. Your All husband right. loves you and he's still attracted to you like I am. <laughs> the fact is that high blood pressure or the medication they're using to minimize your symptom has caused you to have erectile dysfunction. Yeah, and okay. these, these all become those red flags. We see these symptoms. You go to your medical doctor, they give you medication and... For us, we see these as red flags, like your body is telling you something. Right. Let's find that root cause, right. let's, let's listen to our bodies and do something natural right. for it. So Crazy. now we've got, we've got high blood pressure that can drive you down the path of heart disease, the number one cause of death in the country. Wow. Then high blood pressure, what did they say? 65% of men ages 40 to 79, besides high blood pressure, they also have erectile dysfunction. Well, guess what that leads to? Depression. I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I can't, I can't make love to my wife. I mean, that's a huge part of adult relationships is being intimate with our spouse and I can't do those things. Why? Because I got high blood pressure, which has given me heart disease, which means I'm gonna die. My spouse will just have to find a younger model with less miles on it. Okay, right? on, on that note, <laughs> let's go for the next one. Are we, What's the next one? So what are we going to here? We oh, talked okay. about heart health. We talked about high blood pressure. Now, this one's really interesting, too. Diabetes. This oh is a big God. one for men and women. I know we're talking about men right now, but this is this Diabetes. Is a big one. The statistics are really crazy with this. 34.2 million Americans, that's about 1 in 10, have diabetes. 90 to 95% of those people that have diabetes have type 2 diabetes, which is something we've developed over time. It's completely reversible. It's 100% preventable, but yet the medical model doesn't look at it like that. What do they look at? Once you've reached a certain level, they write you a prescription for drugs. And then that just makes you worse. It continues the cycle. So it's preventable, so we can do things to reverse it and keep it from happening. So rather than waiting till you get it, let's fix it before it happens. What do we else we got? Yeah. 88 million Americans aged, this is good, 88 million Americans aged 20 years and older have prediabetes. And 85% of those people don't even know they have it. 85%? Yeah, let me read it again. Wow. 88 million Americans have prediabetes. And 85, and those are 20 years and up. Wow. And then what did you say? 85%? Yes. 88 don't know million they... Americans aged 20 years and older have prediabetes, and 85% of those people don't even know they have it. Wow. Which is amazing. So, yeah. a couple things come up for me. One, I think about the testing that we do. When you're doing testing, yearly testing, things like that don't just creep up on you because we can identify you have prediabetes, we can do something about it. It also makes me think of the people that have come into our office 
and we've been helping people reverse type 2 diabetes for years. We've been very successful with it. We have a lot of people who come to see us and they say, well, I'm a type 2 diabetic. So it was my mom and my brother and my uncle, my cousin, so I'm just doomed. This is not true. It does not mean that your type 2, excuse me, your type 2 diabetes is not reversible because it is. Right. Yeah. Only three to five percent of what you develop is going to be genetic. The rest of it is based on choices. Remember, the choices mm -hmm. yesterday, the choices today, and the choices tomorrow is what really dictates our health in the future. There's a couple of other ones here that are good. Uh, most people with type 2 diabetes also suffer from high blood pressure. What does that do? It affects my kidneys. It drives me down the path of heart disease. Wow. It causes erectile dysfunction. <laughs> and... So it also damages tied. it damages blood vessels. So they're all tied together. They're all tied together. What else we see here is 89% of people with type 2 diabetes are overweight. 38% are physically inactive. Get wow. off your butt and do something. Walk around the block. Do some jumping jacks or push-ups in front of the TV when the commercials come on. Movement. Let's see, 38% uh, are physically inactive. 15% were smokers. Mm. Imagine that. And then lastly, 37% of type two diabetics have chronic kidney disease, stage one through stage four. So there's a lot of other things that are involved in that, but the fact that that many people have pre-diabetes and we can prevent them from getting diabetes is huge. Yeah. So if you know someone, a family member, a loved one, a spouse, a cousin, uncle, aunt, grandparents, neighbors, coworkers, that Anyone. has pre-diabetes, they need to do something today so they right. don't end up stuck on that, 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 that rat wheel. You know that little wheel in the, in the cage yeah, where they the run the mice, wheel. where they run in a circle? Once they get on that hamster wheel, the medical model, they're not getting off unless they meet someone like us and we change their lives. Yeah, yeah, it's quite the process and it shows how everything in your body is related. So it's not really that surprising when you have one health issue that another one doesn't spike up as well Leads if you don't another. do something about it. Anything else on diabetes or? So let me just show one little picture here. The root cause of type two diabetes is insulin resistance. So I'm gonna hold up this picture, but you're gonna also see insulin resistance is, is associated with stroke, heart disease, obesity, migraines, dementia, mm -hmm. osteoarthritis, childhood obesity, PCOS, fatty liver arthritis, Alzheimer's. They're, they're saying that type three diabetes is, is uh, insulin resistance in the brain, erectile dysfunction, sarcopenia, which means muscle loss and high blood pressure. So insulin resistance is the root cause for a lot of the things that we're talking about. And so the only way to get rid of insulin resistance is to work with somebody who actually does that kind of work. Remember the medical model, they wanna suppress your symptom, they're gonna give you a drug. We wanna fix the root cause. What's really driving my blood pressure? What's driving my heart disease? What's driving my diabetes? That's what we wanna fix, because when we fix that, all the symptoms disappear. Right, exactly. I know, the diabetes is, is a big one. Diabetes was huge. So we're gonna go on to the next one, and again, it's amazing how they're all interwoven. So the next one is depression. This is also a really big one that affects a lot of different people, men and women. Let's hear the stats, Doctor. It only affects a few people, right? Most of you are thinking, I don't really know anybody that's depressed. Well, guess what? It affects a lot of people. The World Health Organization says that depression is the number one cause of disability worldwide. Wow. The leading cause of disability worldwide is depression. Globally, there's 264 million people of all ages, ages are suffering from depression. Wow. We know because we've talked about it in past, <clears throat> past Tuesday lives about gut, gut dysfunction and depression. The connection between your gut and your brain is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And if we have gut dysfunction and we're not making serotonin, which is the number one neurotransmitter associated with depression, it's being manufactured here. If I don't make enough, I'm gonna have episodes of depression. Unfortunately, the only solution my medical doctor has or the medical model has is to my, write me a prescription for antidepressive drugs, which are yeah. horrible for us. So we wanna fix this to get rid of this. Now in the last year, 
this COVID thing with the masks on, masks off, can't go here, can't do that. Oh my goodness, it's horrible. Look, we're having a little dance-a-thon over here. You know what I'm saying? We're two-stepping with our heads. The key is this, we've all had bouts of depression because it's been a terrible year, but we've got okay. to fix the underlying cause. That's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, that's good. What also, thyroid problems. We were talking about, Lori was talking about hormones. You know, thyroid problems and, and vitamin deficiencies can mimic depression. So when I go to my doctor and he gives me an antidepressant, but maybe it's my thyroid or maybe it's I'm not converting hormone or maybe all these other issues and yeah, it's not Yeah, the hormone depression. imbalances, the cortisol, the adrenals. So yeah. so yeah, that's how it could show up in your body is, so you could feel depressed because you had a life episode, but there could also be a hormone imbalance that's going on. So if you get on those meds, and we see this all the time, now you're still depressed, now you have the side effects from the meds, and you still have the hormone imbalance. Right. So Remember root testing. cause, root cause. Yeah. What she just described is the root cause. We wanna find the root cause. That's really what we're doing. We're looking for the cause. We're not just going, oh, you've got depression. That's it. That's a symptom. There's something going on that's dysfunctional. Exactly. Lastly, what do big I have? One. That's it for the depression. Okay, depression. So the last one, this is another big one. I think I say this every time, but cholesterol and statins. There's so many stats and information about this. Can't wait to hear it. And so there's a, there's, the problem with this one is very clear. Um, there's a lot of special interest groups out there that, are, that have a lot of money tied up in this. Pharmaceutical companies and statin drugs are huge. They make yeah. billions and billions and billions of dollars. So they've pushed not, uh, well, they pushed a lot of information out there that's more propaganda and that's not truth. So you've gotta really dig in and find out what's really going on. The Farmingham study that was done originally on the statins had a lot of information in it they suppressed. And we see that when we see patients that come in. Most doctors will prescribe a statin drug if you have a, your cholesterol is a little bit high. We hear this one, we're hearing this one a lot. Oh, he, they said it was preventative. Well, what's yeah. it preventing? Nothing. When you get into the real science behind the statins and what their effect is, you're gonna find for men, for men, it's a one to 2% reduction of risk factor. That's it. The side effects wow. are horrific. Let me read some of the other statistics. Um, let's see, medical model, the medical model sees cholesterol as a symptom and they prescribe a drug to minimize the symptom. The problem is cholesterol is really important for three main areas of our body. Brain function. So as we stand here right now, Lori, 25% of the cholesterol in her body is in her brain. Cool. 25%. So that tells you how important it is, especially when the brain only makes up 2% of the body weight. So brain function is really important. And in the study I just, re uh, just told you about, the Farmingham study, they found that when they lowered people's cholesterol too much, they started to develop dementia, okay? Not good. Dementia, and one of the stages of dementia is Alzheimer's. Of course, they suppress that information because they want everybody to take their statin drugs. Wow. So there was that important. Also. Um, I found this was, was really interesting. The Journal of Critical Care Medicine, they found that uh, the lower the patient's cholesterol levels were, the higher the risk of dying within 30 days of a heart attack. So what they oh. found is the lower your cholesterol levels were after a heart attack, the greater risk of you dying within 30 days. Wow. That, that's kind of backwards or opposite of what we've been told. They wow. also found that low levels of LDLs um, increased your uh, risk of mortality by 65%. They also found that low triglycerides, which have gotten a bad rap over the years, low triglycerides were also associated with a 405% increase in mortality rates. Wow. But most importantly to me is when you combine, this study found that when you combine low cholesterol and low triglycerides, it increased your mortality rate by 900%. 900. 900%. Hmm, so everybody out there is thinking, oh, my wow. doctor has me on a statin. It's just the tiniest dose. It's increasing your risk. It's terrible. What else do we have here? Wow. What, oh, this is a, one I really love. I've seen this in numerous places, but this one popped up again. 
Most people don't realize it, but 50% of the people that die of a heart attack have normal cholesterol. Oh, that's a little different than what you normally hear. Yeah, 50% of the people that die of a heart attack wow. have normal cholesterol. Wow. So when I hear people say it's preventative and all that, you know what? It's, they're not being told the truth. I got a couple of more here. Yeah, so uh, let's cholesterol see. isn't everything that you're hearing. Yeah, is cholesterol. Is this new information for everybody that's watching live? I know this is kind of mind-blowing to me. I haven't heard some of these stats before. It's pretty amazing. So what I've said to people for years is this. I'm not here to change your medications, but I need to give you the information so you can make appropriate choices. What I've said for years, the research is very clear. Cholesterol plays the smallest percentage, a small percentage of heart disease, heart attacks and strokes. There isn't any, any research that I've personally read that said that they've proven that heart attacks and strokes are caused by cholesterol. It's inflammation plays a much bigger role. So that was very important also. I did find a study that showed that, that uh, people with high cholesterol actually live longer, <laughs> right? Because the other two areas, the brain, yeah. but our Sex organs, our sex production, sex hormone production. If your uh, cholesterol is too low, you don't make sex hormones, which are important to us. But cellular repair, the cellular membranes are made up of lipids and when we damage those, in order to repair those, you have to have appropriate cholesterol. So that's a big part of so what's going on as cholesterol well. Cholesterol is important. I know that we've heard so many different myths over the years that we have to just lower it. It's almost like the lower the better, but this is not true, not right? True. This is not true. Not Our true. body really needs right. cholesterol. And yes, if it's up a little high, we should definitely do something about it, but there are different things, natural things we can do besides trying to take a stand. I got a couple more here. Okay. Uh, lowering cholesterol with statins, if that was the answer, if lowering your cholesterol with statins was the answer, why do we have such a huge amount of our population has heart disease? Because <laughs> right. it's not preventative. Right. It only reduces your risk factor by 1%, maybe 2% at the most. What's um. more important is this. I have to choose. Do I want to reduce my risk of cardiovascular events like a heart attack and a stroke, which isn't really connected in the research, but they want me to choose between one to two percent risk factor lot reducing my risk factor by one to two percent or experiencing side effects which we both have seen in the office uh -oh. side Horrible. effects include muscle pain lots of muscle pain memory pain. loss Ooh. i can't even remember my pain is so bad i can't remember anything <laughs> mental confusion Ooh. sounds like joe biden right don't be offended God bless him, okay? Dementia, diabetes, cataracts, heart failure. That's a side effect of a statin drug. That's the silliest thing ever. Let Does me take this so I can sense? have a heart attack. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So it's so important, as we talk about all the time, is you need to be an advocate for your health. You need to choose when you wanna do something different. If you're not feeling well, reach out to us. Our mm. functional medicine program all we do is find the underlying cause. We, we dig deep for the root causes of things. So. It's all about natural. Everything that we talked about today, all of the issues that we talked about today that are men's health issues, they're all reversible. We can do something about it naturally, okay? Right. We're not here to tell you don't take your drugs, stop taking your That's not why we're here. We're here to show you there's another path, there's another way. And we have that path. We have a very easy step-by-step -step process that we go through that walks you along the path. It educates you so you fully understand what am I doing, right. why am I doing it, and what's my long-term benefit? Your long-term benefit is optimum health. That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. And on the link of this video is the link for doing um, having a free call with me, a free discovery call. So we can just chat for a few minutes see what your health issues are and see if you could benefit from the program, so. Absolutely. Yeah, so that that was so much information. I know I'm, I'm looking at the time, we're always trying to be so mindful of time. Thank you for sharing all those stats. Yeah, that was, was a lot. That was a lot, but it's important information. And I hope that at the end of all this, you have that feeling that there's hope. hope. There's hope for doing something different. There's hope. There is hope. And so just really quick next week, because yes, we do go live every Tuesday at 4.30 right here, 
share this information with your friends and family. Um, next week is the 22nd and we're going to talk about the seven most common gut issues. And then on the 29th, we're going to wrap up the whole men's health month with the top five benefits of increasing your testosterone. Very interesting information. You're not going to want to miss it. So there's no questions, no other information that um, we want to share. Thank you, everybody, we for appreciate joining us. It. Thank you guys for being yeah. on. I know it was a lot of statistics stuff, and I was reading stuff off the paper, but the bottom line is this. We're here. Our passion is to serve and to help others achieve optimal health and wellness and enjoy their life, as much of their life that it's left. We want you to enjoy all of it. Yes, Okay. absolutely. So we really, that's our purpose. That's our passion. We don't want you to settle for how you feel. No. All that low energy, you're feeling achy, you don't have a zest for life. There is hope. There's so call. Hope. Thank you. Thank you, Joran. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, again, for joining us. Hope to see you next week. Contact us with any questions, comments, have, and all that. Have a great day. Yes. Enjoy your week. And for all the fathers out there, have a fantastic Father's Day weekend. Happy Father's Day. Bye, everybody. Bye.